Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weeb Family Basement. We are the Weeb Family. We're a lot like your family, except for we read manga together. We're here. It's another every other week release. And we're going to be discussing Clover by the legendary shoujo creators, Clamp, all capitals, don't lowercase any of those. Um, Even all the Clover letters are capitals. Yes. Uh, so a lot of other YouTube channels criticize for people only doing first impressions and not covering a whole series. Well, we're changing that. We're doing a complete series discussion. Well, it's very short, though. I think, doesn't that contain only two volumes? Four. But oh, wait, really? Yeah. You're, you're, you're forgetting the technicality that this is going to be a full series review. All right, all right. Not just a first impression, which other people criticize. But before we get into the juicy goodness, I want everyone to like this video immediately. Pause it, like it. Uh, you make have sure you pause it to like it. Okay, well, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and you may have to pause it to share it on all of your socials. And if you need even more socials, which no one does, but if you do, join us on Instagram. Uh, we have links to our pages uh, below. So, boom! With that out of the way, boom! We are ready to discuss Clover by Clamp. I gotta emphasize Why do you have to it. emphasize that it's clamp? Because it's always in capitals. Clamp. It's why just clamp. Clamping something. Daughter, do you know why it's clamp? No idea. I have no idea. It's very weird. No, if studio. I'm remembering it correctly. Now, I didn't look at the Wikipedia before saying this, so I'm sure some um actuallys will correct me. Well, that's kind of your fault. That's a you problem that you didn't look at the Wikipedia page. I've looked it page. up before. I've looked it up before. I just don't know if I'm remembering it correctly. It's a mispronunciation of clump because they called themselves a clump of potatoes. Actually, I remember you telling me about that vaguely. Yes, so... That's really weird. It's women. Of course it's weird. Yo! Yo! <laughs> Dad just pulled a sexist. I just pulled a little misogyny right yeah. there. So, okay. We're going to go ahead and get started with this full series discussion. Now, this is a daughter book. Because, yes. okay, let me see if I can get this straight. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Tani Mura. Was it Arnie or Arina Tani Mura? Who did uh, Gentleman's Cross Alliance? I don't know. I don't remember her name. I think it's Arina Tani Mura. Used to be your favorite manga artist. I don't have a favorite manga artist. Well, you uh, said used to. I never have had a favorite manga artist. Okay, whatever. One used of to... your favorite? I don't so have when you favorites. Really, oh my god, why are you um, actually... Because <laughs> I don't have a favorite. <laughs> like, okay, favorite yeah. artists that I have, like... It's are Toby you... Fox, we know. No, it's people that I get inspiration from my art style from. Okay. And the only manga artist I have an art style inspiration from was from the person who wrote Peta Teen, but obviously I only have like the one volume of that. Okay, let me, let me, let me back up. Your favorite manga style is late 90s, early 2Ks, Shoujo. Yes. Okay. And this includes uh, Ariana Tani Mura, Clamp, and uh, I can't remember who did Othello, but like uh, Nana, what's her name? Ayazawa. All these people are tend to be your favorite style. Yes. Okay. And here <laughs> recently, you've really glummed on to Clamp, right? Like you've got Clover, obviously, uh, Chobits. And you're collecting card captor Sakura. Yeah. Am I missing anything? No. But you're a big clam fan. I guess. I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't get as passionate about my like love for manga as other things. I don't know. You're just ruining Dad's kind of narrative. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm trying to get people hype. I'm sorry. You know, guys. see this this is what I talk about when people. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, no. We're I think this, going is gonna, this is going to be a spicy video. You is think it, it is? is because, it? and here's how I know. We kind of have a rule in the Weeb Family House that when we do discussion manga, we don't talk about we it. We try not to. We try not to. Yes. Because we're trying to save all this heat for the camera, for you guys. Because no one wants to listen to us after we've all hashed things out and... 
come yeah. to agreement and come to agreement we're just here being low key low energy talking like we're on npr or anything like that no people want the <laughs> they full... want us at each other's they throat. want the yes. flavor they want the full-blown jerry springer the the mari trash uh if you will What's... daughter is not aware of jerry, jerry springer. springer oh that was that was before her time yes it Check was it Quick Check change. There was a daytime show. Well, I guess it started late night and then it became daytime. I never show really called the Jerry much. Springer Show in the nineties. And like what they would do would be something like a show topic would be like, I'm sleeping uh with my wife's brother. Um Tom. And it was set up yes. in a talk show format. So you yes. would have the talk show host, Jerry mm-hmm. Springer, and you would have a guest like the the wife come right. on and she would come on and talk and about how maybe, awesome her husband maybe is. you would talk about then the husband would be there and they would talk about how great their uh mm. relationship is and then the brother would surprise come on and saying, then the, the two would make out make out and then the wife would rush them throw in chairs and like there was this big dude named steve and he would break them up and everyone would go steve 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 i never steve. really what? i knew of it i never really yeah. watched it yeah and then at the end, Jerry Springer Her would give some... Her confusion. This is the <laughs> reason why the 90s was weird. Oh, the 90s was great. Her confusion. No, no, and then, no the, the, confusion gr- the best part was it was kind of like G.I. Joe, where at the end of each episode of Jerry Springer, he'd give some inspirational thing, and he would always end with... The PSA? Be good. Yeah, he'd be like, be good to yourself and to each other. And it he was would. totally, And totally there was usually hollow. chaos going on in the background yeah. as he's saying it. Yeah, it, it was a... You really, um, you really child, miss something anyways, special. So. I think we've honest. really deviated here. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's what the people want to see. They want to see more Jerry Springer and less NPR. Okay, okay. my bad. My beat. My beat. Look, my beat. Okay, so. Why don't, why don't we just get to like. like why is no, this we're just still summary? setting it up because oh y'all won't let me finish. Just go. Just go. Daughter likes clamps. See, this is the Jerry Springer. Daughter likes clamps. Clamp. Okay. We can so, agree with that. We got you, Clover, because this edition is a uh, one shot. But it's four collected volumes in one omnibus. One hardcover, hard cover, deluxe Color omnibus. pages, all that good stuff. Yep. So we finally decided to read it for the channel. Yeah. Because for some reason, everyone wants me to read Shoujo. I don't know why. It's because you're a big man. They want, like, this funny. They want the subversion of expectations? Yes. Look, yeah. I, learned, I worked in a craft store for a long time. And mm. we would sometimes have uh, managers that were guys. Sometimes they were, like, guys. Mm -hmm. And when you would see them, like, walk down the aisles with bundles of, like, fake flowers in their hands, somehow that was just comical. And I think that's kind of what we're going for. Generally speaking, shoujo is trash. You're mid. That opinion's mid. That opinion's mid. That that opinion is God tier. That opinion's mid. Okay. So I want to do things slightly differently this time. Okay. So we're going to follow the same general format. We're going to give you an elevator pitch of what this is about. Oh, can I summarize it? Oh, uh, yeah, but one second. Then we're going to do our rating. But I want to change how we do our, our, the rating. So we've kind of been going thumbs up, thumbs down. Mm-hmm. I want us to give it a score out of 10. Oh, I can't do because, that. Because, well, Try. that's fine. If you think it's a thumbs up, do above five. If you think it's a thumbs down, do below five. Okay. That's good enough. Because I don't think a simple thumbs up or thumbs down is giving us the gradation that we need. Because yeah. like, okay. like Sakamoto days, I gave it a thumbs up, but I said it was a barely a thumbs up. Yeah. So I want to give it oh, out of oh, okay, 10. Okay, okay. I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Okay. Okay. And then after we do that, we will get into the spoilers where it's absolutely your fault if you get spoiled. Because you should click away. You're not. I mean, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can I go Daughter, ahead? elevator okay, pitch. Hit us with it. All right, you have this guy. Um, isn't his name Kazuhiko, right? Yes. All right, he he's like he used to work for the military or something, and there's like okay, this old lady's like okay, I know you don't work for the military anymore, but I need you to like take this like girl for me or something. Mm-hmm. I need you to take her to this park, I guess, or something. Mm-hmm. I forget exactly what she says. And he's That's like, close enough. deliver the package. Yeah, and he's like, all right, and so they find this girl, and she like used to live in like a bird cage or something. And so he's trying to, like, take her to this park. But then, you know, you find out that, like, I guess she has, like, wings or something. And then it's like, oh, wow, she's, like, this secret government project called a clover. But it's a lot more confusing in that because for, like, the first half of the book, it's, like, really confusing. Great. I mean, that, yeah? Uh, I think the only, yeah. Because I, I, I if I get say... into anything else, I think it would be spoilers. 
Fair. Let, let me try to... Your elevator pitch was good. Let me let me see how mine is, okay? All right. I would say Clover is a quasi-cyberpunk story that follows Kazuhiko as he tries to take Sue, who is the person on the cover, yes. who is a four-leaf clover, and clovers are these special magical people. I don't even know why you're telling that, because you don't even learn that till the end of the book. No, no you, you learn it like halfway through. Yeah. I guess. I just... Never mind. And then he has to like deliver her to this place called Fairy Park. Yes. And it's all about their travels and things like that. Kind this. of. The first half is. The yes. second half kind of goes okay. away from that. Is that a good enough elevator pitch? I guess. Yes. Okay. You can just see... You can just you see can how much see, you hate this book. You can see Mom's about to have a Springer reaction here any minute. <laughs> okay, so let's go around the room and do the ratings. Now that we've given the elevator pitch, who wants to go first? I don't think it really matters. You know what? I'll go first. I'll go All first. All right. Everyone cares about your opinion the most, obviously. No, no. Well, Mom says I think that, but anyway. <laughs> he thinks that. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to give this... A 6.5 out of 10. Which I think is pretty generous. I think that... Uh, I think especially for the Target demo, which is uh, tween and teen girls, I think this hits on a lot of themes that they tend to care about. It does it in a very melodramatic way that resonates with that audience. I really enjoy the art direction. Yeah, the art's really good. I like, like good panel layouts. I like the very avant-garde panel lay panel layouts, um, and I just generally think that uh, it, it does well with what it's trying to do. And uh, I think we'll we'll pick up this hot take in the discussion se section. But I think this truly is a unique shoujo. So there you go. I mean, That's why I'm giving it yeah. a six and a half out of ten. Okay. Why don't we do? Why we say mommy for last? Okay. D um, I have to give it a seven out of ten. Okay. So I bring it slightly higher. I think. And you're in the target demo, so. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm trying. I'm gonna try to explain without getting super spoilery. So I guess I have to explain yeah. more in the discussion area. But it's like. I really, like it. I, I like it a lot already, but I want to like it more. But the mm. issue is it has some like pacing issues, especially in the beginning, that just mm. makes it hard to like pick up. Because once you get like halfway through, it's fine. Mm. But it's just confusing. And also the four leaf clover character herself, which is supposed to be this like basically secondary main character, I feel like she's ultimately not as compelling as the rest of the characters, which kind of sucks. Sure. Mom. She's, she's going like a, she's going she, like a two out of ten. No, she's going zero out of ten. No, no. Okay, so I was thinking about this. So for art, like, because as I was reading, I was separating the art from the story. Yeah, the art is like absolutely beautiful. The art is like an eight and a half because, mm. um, really, the panel layouts make it, like you said, very unique. Yeah, I think it loses something in the where the text bubble layouts because a lot of times I'm like who's speaking mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. sitting there be trying to figure out who's speaking though I liked it when they started doing like a third of the way through where they started doing it where di like they would color the bubbles depending on who was talking I did like that so like the background was either white or black depending on who was talking yeah I, I felt that. like that worked well that was that was interesting they didn't do it all the time but so there was still some confusion at the end but it was very confusing at the beginning yeah um so yes the art is like an eight and a half Maybe mm. even a nine. But let's get to the story. She's writing it like two out of ten. The story's like a two. Two. Okay. It I really she... is. Like, I, and I'll agree with Daughter and say that I want to like it. I just don't. But don't you agree it's primarily a pacing issue? <sighs> I, no, I feel I'm like... I'm going to say it's not. Like, I, I'm... Okay, maybe I'm about to mansplain. Wait, but I should we wait and should we wait until we get into like we will? I want to say two more things. All right. I think I know the reasons why you're going to say, and I'm probably going to agree with them, because this is definitely not a perfect story. But let me throw an extra tidbit of information out there. This is technically an incomplete work. Oh wait, really? Yes. 
uh, the ladies at Clamp said that they really wanted to do two more volumes before finishing this. I guess it does kind of end abruptly. But they never did, so this is considered incomplete. Now, I, that do, said, I, don't I don't know if that would solve the problem. I don't know if it would solve it for you. I don't think but, it would uh, solve it for mom if I'm assuming what she dislikes about it is what I'm thinking. Yeah. But I do think it does kind of end abruptly. I mean, I don't it, think it, it would probably anything, but help, it but I don't know that it would fix it. Maybe not. But I, before we talk about... I say, I do want to agree. You know how I always say that there are certain uh, books or entertainment that are for... I'm like, ah, that's for 12-year-old boys. Yeah, this is for 12-year-old girls. This is for 12-year-old girls. Like, I'm, I, as immediately as I read this, I was like... This is for 12-year-old girls. If you mm. read this when you're 12-ish, the age, I can mm. understand, like, falling in love with this and being like, this is my favorite thing I've ever read. I feel like I'm just too old. Too old. Yeah. And if you're not a 12-year-old girl, you should just tune out tune out right now <laughs> because there's about to be spoilers. Yeah. So yeah. we're now officially at the point where if you stay, you're going to get spoiled. And you have to decide if that's okay with you. Don't throw any chairs. I mean, at the we want Jerry you to stay and get yes. spoiled, but you don't have to. I mean, yes. maybe read it and then come back and watch yeah. the rest. Or if you want to, there should be a timestamp below. You can jump straight to what we're previewing for the next videos. But with that, let's get into the spoilers. Who wants to start the spoiler discussion first? Why? Why not? Probably, probably one of you two, because I think I probably I ranked it the highest out of all of you. I mean, all of us. Actually, I'm going to say mommy's uh, criticism real quick because I thought of this joke and I want to say it. Oh, no. (laughs) Not because I want to say it. One of the problems with this is that their in-universe is a song that one of the main characters sings and Clamp is like Selena Gomez and they're on (laughs) repeat, beep, 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 beep. Okay, look. As I was was reading this, I was so annoyed because mm. I had to reread that stupid song. You could skip it. You didn't have to read it. Okay. That's what yeah, dad I, said. That's and what... that's what you said. And like, I, I mean, I didn't read it word for word, but I did, I skimmed it because I want to make sure, okay, make sure the lyrics didn't change. Make sure they didn't put anything in there that like maybe changes the meaning. It's nope. It's syncing up with the panels. It's n- yeah. Is it syncing up with the panels? Nope. Half the time it wasn't really syncing up. Um, a yeah. lot of the time, I'll have to say that did bother me. There, like, there were no changes in the lyrics to make you go like, "Ooh, maybe this is telling me something different." No, it's just the song over and over again. Now, if this was an anime, that yeah, it would just be would playing be in the background, and it would probably be really, really good. You know, you'd come mm-hmm. up with a really good song, you time the music to the imagery, and it'd be really mm-hmm. nice because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying it to get be you like the music box and cowboy bebop, something like yeah. that. So, like, as you're reading, what you're supposed to be doing is thinking of the, which I have no music to go along with these lyrics, so I can't, Mm -hmm. I can't kind of, like, put this song in my head to put it as I'm reading. If I had that song as I was reading, maybe it'd be different, because I would line that up with all the things that I was uh, reading. And also, like we were saying, especially in the beginning, they had very um, unique panel layouts, which was interesting. It's not really some, you see... More of that in experimental American comics. You really don't see it in a lot of manga. Yeah, you, I mean, you don't see um, it at all in manga, honestly. So, like, the, the panel layouts are very unique. And I feel like because they put that song in there repeatedly, it actually took away from the panel layouts. It took away from the... Because all I kept there... Rather than focusing on how beautiful their panel layouts are, seeing how when I turn a page, oh, that's like a mimic of the page that I just saw, or all these kinds of unique things that they were doing with their panel layouts, I was sitting there being annoyed that they're putting this stupid song in there over and over again that they wanted me to read. Because why would you put it in there if you didn't want me Mm. to read it? That's what was annoying me. And... So on top of that, the beginning, that, that first, that first chapter, that first story felt like a one shot, right? It felt like, Ooh, I have this really cool idea and let me put it into a one shot. So they didn't give you a ton of information. They're like, cause because I only have so much space, I'm going to just start right in the middle and I'm going to go mm-hmm. for the action and I'm just going to do it it's without telling you. In media Reyes. Whatever it's called. I Stop feel, me trying to be a fancy French person. I feel they failed. But it's okay. I Stop feel trying to be a, fr- a fancy Italian person. They failed at that storytelling because 
all I stuff. all I felt was lost mm-hmm. as I was reading this. Now maybe that's the feeling you were supposed to get, but that lostness also made me feel angry on top of having to read this song over and over again, which was making me annoyed. So as I was reading it, I was just like, I don't want to read this because it is just weighing me down with all this stuff that I don't want. Where, but it had all like these unique things, like image raw imagery wise, that I did mm-hmm. like. Again, like I said, the first Reading part this felt like playing Final Fantasy or something like that with these really <laughs> unique character designs. Like I'm talking about just character designs, just the aesthetic. Well, okay, talking about yeah. character it designs, it does have that Final Fantasy feel. I yeah. feel like somebody really skilled came up with some beautiful illustrations. Mm-hmm. Like, and they the illustrations are in the book, and you can see them and stuff. And they're yeah. like, let's make a story around these illustrations. And it just didn't feel fleshed out until you get to the end. And it's a unique way of telling the story because you have, you're telling at the end, mm-hmm. at, at the beginning, and you're, go, you're basically working your way backwards yeah, if in the you, story. It actually, yeah, it literally goes backwards And so in the story. that's unique and interesting, but because so little is told you at the very beginning, it's very frustrating. So this is supposed to be four volumes. It, I don't know if this is how they chose to... Uh, collect them for the uh, for this all-in-one or if they were published in different orders but I think what I would like to have seen was volume one be the front story so this is where Sue and Kazuhiko first meet up and they're on the run and everything right then I would like to have seen volume two or sorry volume three go in next the which one I with think the Ron no, the other one. The one with uh, his girlfriend. Or uh, That's Aura. number two. No, no, no. There's four of these There's, in here. You, they uh, break. you have the story of Aura being killed, and then yeah. you have the story of him kind of meeting Aura. Yeah. And so it goes ending, um, Aura dies, you meet Aura, and then you meet Ron. No, no, no. Isn't no, that the way when they meet no. Aura and they meet Ron, that's the same story. Mm-hmm. No, it should be him meeting Sue and they're on their way to Fairy Island or whatnot. Yeah. Whatever, I don't know what chapter it cuts off because they don't have volume Yeah, they don't have the volume breaks. breaks. It's really awkward. So what I'm saying is when they're on the run and then put in there where him and Aura are dating or whatever, so you get more context on how Aura and Sue met, then you go back to the ending with Sue getting to Fairy Island and all that stuff. And then have that side story with Aura dying and Ron at the end. I think. I, yeah, I feel like that would make more sense. Yeah, I think that would have been a better order to arrange these in. I don't know if this is how they were published. I don't know if this is in publication order, story, or I don't know. I'm just saying, I think that simple rearrangement would have raised my score from like a six and a half to a, a seven or something like that. Because it, it does get confusing. They do take way too long to explain what clovers are, why we should care. And honestly, it gets a little convoluted with the different leaves of clovers. No, the leaves are not convoluted. What are you talking about? I no, mean... the fact that like uh, a higher, like a three-leaf clover can't detect the presence of a four-leaf clover. That was dumb in my Okay, opinion. that's dumb only because how did the how did Sue not know that Aura was a clover? No, I think she did know she was a clover. Oh. Aura didn't other, know that she was Sue a was a clover. Oh. Well, they made it seem like she didn't know she was a but clover. But then how can regular people know that there's I would clovers? also like That's... to point out, I think some things just... No, Kazuhika's the only regular human, and he didn't... He, I don't think he knew about... And I, I think he knew about the clover project, but he didn't know they were clover. Look, I think mm-hmm. a lot of things were not planned out as they were writing this story, because when they tell Aura's story where she is killed... That's first of all, the best part. First of all, why did she get killed? I don't know. No, that that totally made. Well, first of all, it wait, makes wait, complaints. I want to get to my point. Okay. When they sh- okay, first of all, she has a tattoo of a clover on her chest. Fine. Why is it no, a it's four on her leaf? Leg. Why isn't it a one leaf? That's the one thing that. Oh, Aura me. does. Yes. Aura does, yes, and sorry. it's but what I'm this four leaf clover that's on her chest. That's the problem. It's a four leaf clover that says one on it, mm. but. In the next chapter, they go on and show the different clovers, and they have different leaves. Maybe, maybe that she could have been the first that one that was experimented on, 
And so they just they didn't. They locked in the logo. Yet. Yeah, they didn't know that there was going to be multiple levels of That's some nice fan winking. Have fun know. with that. What I'm saying is, is I don't think they had no, these things planned out. And it had totally made sense they had to kill Sue because that was the whole point. The whole point is. Not Sue, Aura. Oh, no, it doesn't matter how she died, though, because her whole power was no. that she knew when she was going to die. But my question is why? Because she's uh, a clover. And did she. Okay, and if that. Clover, if that four leaf clover wasn't the clover that they gave her, did she put that clover there saying, This is where I'm going to get shot because I know how I'm going to die? I don't know. It, see? Well, also, I don't the, know. the only thing, I don't think another that, thing that bothers me. But no, hold on. What's confusing think... is that why is there magic when it's cyberpunk? I thought the whole point about cyberpunk was that there isn't magic. Some cyberpunks, most notably Shadowrun have magic in them okay i didn't know but, if that was um, just a thing that was weird in this book it, it's 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 okay for, first of all they first don't re- all. they don't really show any magic and the person setting the events in motion is a grand wizard not racist at all i How's think that they should racist because people in the clan are called grand wizards oh yeah I anyway I, that might be a lost in translation thing. yeah anyway yeah. anyway um we're told about all these magical people, but we never really see him fight. So, I, I guess what's his name? Gingetsu is a two or three leaf clover. He's a two. So okay, we do see one of them fight, but the whole thing is we've got these not racist grand wizards, <laughs> and apparently they're supposed to be the rulers of the world. The but underworld. The clovers, though, are like the nuclear uh, proliferation. Okay. My question all. is... Well, hold on. Let me finish. It, so, they have to eliminate Clovers because they're worried about them being threats to their power. Because, only threes and fours. Uh, I guess, but maybe they just don't want to take a risk well, and then uh, one think... leaf can grow. Like, that's the one part that makes sense to me. They probably killed her off, Aura, because they were worried about Clover proliferation. I guess. I and also, that. the two-leaf Clover guy, he, number one, he doesn't seem... He doesn't seem very strong compared to the three and four leaf. Mm. And also... Well, he's not supposed to be. He's... Yeah. He's but, Super Saiyan 1. Everyone else is Super Saiyan 2, 3, and 4. But anyways... Or no, he was Super Saiyan 2. Yeah. Anyways, he also... He... He, um... He still worked with the military, which was very closely aligned with, like, the high wizards. So it's mm. like... You know... Yeah, the whole politics and everything surrounding it is kind of weird. Like, okay. It's not bad or anything. It's just very bare. It's just We're we're focusing on the wrong things. It's so unknown and so... This geopolitics around metahumans and all that is not even the point of the story. We're fixating on it. The point of this story is to have 12-year-old girls be like, Ah, uh, there's some place I can belong and okay. feel loved, and I need to go there. I'm so lonely and the sad. only thing oh my, I got. God, bro. What? God, bro. The only thing I got from what that, that first song that is just disgusting that they sang over and over again <laughs> was the line, "Take me." Yeah. Take me. Yeah. Take me. Take take me. Yes. Oh, God, he rose. It's exact. I mean, what else would it mean? No, I don't think it meant. I don't. It doesn't. I don't think a book written for 12 year old girls would be sexual like that. But there's sex in this, so. I mean, I guess, but those are two adult characters. That's different. That's true. They're they're adult characters. But I'm just saying. Exactly, bro. It's a. Okay, look. (laughs) You have a song with the words take me. Mm hmm. And it's. 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 It's by itself. It, at one point, it's like, take me, and then it's like, take me away. Mm-hmm. So it's no, like, it's take me to elsewhere. Whatever. You write it so many times, you can't get it correct. I'm trying to forget it. <laughs> um, but the t- but you have it being written by one, by a woman who is in love with her boyfriend. They do have sex. And by a girl who doesn't know what love is. So she's imagining what these what that is okay, well, let's, i don't know let's, but let's just, focus on the thing i'd also like to point out at the end where she quote unquote dies <sighs> she tells him that she loves him and i'm just like that yeah i did not like that That, that is that ridiculous kind of this no, is stupid I think... and i don't like that at all well it comes from a girl who doesn't know what love is yes and that's why it makes sense and i yeah it was annoying though yeah oh, oh a 14 year old girl admitted that she liked a dude or love to do because but, she oh didn't god, know what it is. Oh my god, that's so bad storytelling. Oh my god. No, man. I think as someone, I okay, I've never been a fourteen-year-old girl, but I've been a fourteen-year-old boy, and I said a lot of stupid stuff. And no, I no, no, no. Dumb okay, ideas. I'll give you that. Yes, fourteen-year-olds think they're in love all yeah. the time. Yes, 
I feel like the, that part of the story was poorly written. But it's written for people that age, so I think it's I okay. guess so, but what I'm saying is, is like I felt like there should have been more of an acknowledgement that she didn't know what love is, okay. so she thought okay, she was. No, 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 this no, comes no, back to my nice. issue, though. Ah. Because the beginning of the story is poorly paced, it doesn't take the time... Like, it does show their adventures going to the place, but it doesn't take enough time to do that. It doesn't actually go into depth of what they're doing. So, by that, you don't actually have the moment, you don't really have the moments where she does gain love feelings for them, whether it's valid or not. So, that's the problem. Again, it's all about the uh, pacing issue at the beginning. I think y'all are just missing big swaths of the story. Like, okay, so, what we really need to be focusing on is that everything everything that's set in motion is because Sue is locked away in this cage yeah. because this is where the clover stuff is convoluted. If she ever loves someone and becomes attached, they can become a four leaf clover and we can okay, just Okay, that was a No, no, it's everywhere. not that they No, no, that's not what they said. If a four leaf No, if a four leaf clover becomes attached to any person that means that that person would the person that they're attached to would become powerful because that four leaf clover would yeah, do anything oh, wow. for that that's, person that's that's so different it's than essentially the same thing you yeah, said they would turn into a four leaf i clover. was being hyperbolic it's not anyway it's anyway. not even the point you're focusing on the wrong stuff the point is mm. she was in this bird cage you're making me forget english she was in this bird cage and she's experiencing this incredible loneliness because I don't know why they just didn't kill her when she's a baby to prevent powerful people. But because you want the power yourself, duh. I guess, but so she's bro, living this lonely stop, life. Stop, bro. Like for real. And she's basically at the point where she would rather die than to live this lonely existence. And her right. and her dying wish is she's vicariously fallen in love with her best friend's uh, boyfriend, and. Uh, she gets wrapped up in this savior complex kind of thing. Like what they talk about in that movie Speed where relationships built on intense moments. Uh, they do that by going to the uh, the fairy island and whatnot. And I think it's all about um, being so... What, what you're trying to do is you're trying to resonate with 12-year-old girl readers who are like, I feel lonely just going to school. No one talks to me. I feel like I live in this cage. And what I really want is some handsome guy to choose me over some other hottie dude, and, dude, dude, and take me. I love me. how you're explaining this, this like I don't understand that. Dude, I understand dude, it. I'm way, saying it's way, poorly listen, written. Listen, listen, dude, as, it's, as, no, no. As a man, I need to explain <laughs> this. To, I understand this whole concept. I get it. Then what I'm saying, talking about? I don't like it. I okay. think it's poorly written. Then that's written. a you problem. I, I'm <laughs> saying, I don't... You guys keep telling me, no, this is what it says. Is, yes, I understand that's what it says. I then think it's poorly written. if you don't like that, that's a you problem. Okay. Well, well, what do you want from me? Well, what I want from you <laughs> is that you keep focusing on the Clover stuff, and I'm telling you that's not the, the real of meat of the story, and you're like, I understand the real meat of the story. Okay, then why, why haven't you talked about, about it? it? I talked about both of it. No, no you didn't. You didn't, actually. Also, also, controversial opinion. The main, the, 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 the three leaf cover guy is way cuter than the oh, main Ron? guy. Yes. What are you, thoughts, mommy? I, the main guy is a rat tail. How am I going to like that? <laughs> he got that, he got that mullet drip. He does. It's pretty it's awful. So ugly. That was so popular 90s anime, like Tenchi Muyo. He had it was that pretty bad. Tail. I almost forgot he had that old. Look, <laughs> look. Doesn't, uh. Ron Mahaff, he has the the rat the tail, little right? tail, yeah. yeah. No, he doesn't. He only has that when he's a girl. No, that's more like a beret. This we're talking about like a little tiny ponytail. Oh, um, I guess maybe. No, um, see, we just if had anything, that Jerry Springer moment that everyone comes. If here anything, for. I like the story between Ron and the other guy better. Gengetsu. Yeah, I feel like it was much more. Um, emotionally like i felt more emotionally attached to how ron felt than i did to how sue felt like i think they just assumed you knew how mm -hmm. sue, like because you're a 12 year old girl reading this story i'm going to assume you know how she felt so i'm not going to explain any of her emotions or any of her actions i mean it is easy to assume though you pretty much go into the story expecting that i guess what i'm saying is like i don't assume i wasn't assuming and because i wasn't assuming i'm like what's going on i Whereas assume the this is going to be like tobit so i'm like well she's probably going to be in love with the guy i mean Yes, I get that, but they didn't even, like, 
They didn't explain it in a way that made me emotionally attached or feel for her. I don't know. Like, my feelings were more for Ron. Like, I could feel... I could feel how he felt. Ron like, had better he, character development. Yes, he, he, for, he, for sure. he had, like, the despair. Yeah. Like, I didn't feel despair from her, right? Yeah. I didn't oh, feel the despair okay, of being question, trapped though. in the cage, whereas Ron kept talking about, I can't leave. I can't go outside. Even when I'm in this house, I still can't go outside. Well, I, Here, here's a good question, though, about that. He escaped, right? Which I know part of it was I was trying to get away from his twin brother or something. Mm -hmm. But... She's a four-leaf clover straight up. They literally said that the wizard's power combined cannot defeat her. Why didn't she just go out the cage? Because she's you... a 14-year-old girl and doesn't understand the world? Uh, well, yeah, there, there is some sort of abuse thing in there. But did you not hear me when I said the clover stuff is extremely convoluted? I know. And that's one of but, the... But I think... why, didn't, why didn't the two twin... Like, they're like, oh, we can't leave... Actually, no, no, actually, I'll actually they do explain question. it at the end. They say when they leave the cage, they a, their age accelerates accelerate yeah they, they there is some sort of dependency but again it's poorly explained Exa yeah oh, that was like in the oh. very last chapter okay, they hold, tell hold you on. that well, let me talk about why i think ron's story is more okay compelling. but i just thought of something really genius once you're done with that okay so the reason why um ron's story is more compelling is because unlike sue he's not alone in his cage there's two other dudes and one of them being his twin brother but he's isolated from within because his brother murks the other guy and he has such a strong moral compass that he's like, no, I just can't be around this. And he would rather escape than die and die than to be around his brother, which creates the uh, family tension and everything like that. And we also get the, the dynamism of Gingetsu who takes him in and changes his heart on wanting because he's kind of a loner and he wants to be that way but then he develops feelings for ron and a non -BL well, I was gonna say, way. even it's if, definitely like a parental type well even if yeah. you want like say as a fan you wanted mm -hmm. that to develop into a bl type mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. it can't because his brother said even if mm -hmm. if you love any if you love anyone else more than me even after you're dead i will kill them that means that ron still has to remain mm -hmm. emotionally distant from anyone but that's putting a barrier into the character development, which then becomes interesting. Exactly. Sue has none of this stuff. Noth nothing. Sue, I'm just in a cage. Uh, I am the most Paris. powerful being in the world, and yes, I am clearly emotionally abused, but I can't take that step forward myself. Mm -hmm. Like, she doesn't even take the step forward herself in the beginning of the story to say, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go mm -hmm. to Fairy Park. No, the old woman says, take her to Fairy Park. Well, but we do find out later she wanted it. Well, I mean, she didn't like, want it, but she didn't, she could have just left I do herself. Say, I do want to say one interesting thing about Sue, but Daughters had some genius that she wanted to spit out there. I think, I didn't think about the abuse aspect at all, and I think that kind of actually fixed, like, the one part of my head that wasn't making sense about, like, I guess the message part of it. Because obviously you have the story that's going on, but then you have what it's really saying. Hmm. So, you know, it's, it's kind of obvious as, like, well, you have Ron with his brother, which is kind of like, you know, you can have issues of finding, like, relate, like love with people if you have issues with your family, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, that's his brother. I don't, I mean, there's a relationship with the one guy in Aura, which, I, I don't know, I don't have anything to say about that. It's just kind of there. It's kind of just as, like, a thing there to just be, like, a normal relationship. But I was kind of always lost with what Sue's like relationship is supposed to be and how it connects with like how you find love comparatively to like familial love I guess like I don't know what I'm saying is not really making sense but like it could well, be no, like I... that if you even if you because obviously she's a powerful being even if you have the capability to love other people if you have been abused by a family member it could be difficult to do that even if you possess the capability to do that well Sue is a girl that's been extremely sheltered she has no interpersonal well, relationship skills so it's just a case of the most, first love the most interesting part about sue is glossed over in like a couple in like two three sentences she says uh i didn't know my father mm -hmm. my mother was afraid of me but when she found out that i was worth something she got the bounty on me and that then was I was locked in this cage. That, yeah. that was the most interesting thing yeah. about her no, character. No, and a... they could have expanded on that and made that very, very interesting. But there was just nothing. I think there's another interesting aspect to Sue, which is 
she basically created Fairy Park. And here's the thing about Fairy Park. It's literally an amusement park on an island in the middle of some body of water. And there's a big statue of uh, Aura there, which keep in mind, in universe, Aura is not even that big of a star. Like, they're, this island is basically like, what if Michael Jackson had a theme park, <laughs> but it's, I don't know, Tito Jackson instead. Like, <laughs> no, none of our viewers are going to get a Tito Jackson reference. I don't even get a Tito Jackson It's reference. his, like, le- it's like the least popular member of the Jackson 5. Mm. Anyway, um, and what I think is interesting about that statue of Aura is that when Kazuhiko sees it, she's like, Oh, doesn't it look just like her? And he's like, oh, no, not, not at, at all. all. <laughs> and they don't. They look nothing alike. They, like, they do not. This statue kind of looks like angelic Miku, right? Uh, yeah. like, Honestly, okay, if we're talking about, like, this is 12-year-old boy, this is 12-year-old girl, this is what a 12-year-old girl would, would imagine a pop star to well, look that, like. That's, well, that's yeah. kind of what, that's what I'm trying to get yeah. to, is that she imagined her being this, like, really angelic, you know, flowing golden hair type character that looks like a a vocaloid or something with all this fancy equipment for singing but the real aura was like uh latina coded like or dude, she's hot coded. dude she well, is she's, hot but she got, got dark curly, curly hair. hair she tends to go more for the quote-unquote bat wings rather than angel wings so she's mm, more she's, like this demon type character rather say than she's angel got that character. goth drip but i'm just saying she's more like a demon goth. rather than an angel and what i think is interesting is i've heard this about infidelity one time which is when uh someone is experiencing infidelity they're the person being cheated on without seeing the other person they always imagine that person to be better looking than them just just a better person the perfect right Right, because how else in your mind can you justify Mm -hmm. you know them abandoning you for this other person Mm -hmm. and that's obviously not always the case. So what I think is interesting is that I think uh, Sue imagined this angelic version of Aura because only someone like that could uh, take, you know, the, this amazing or could have this amazing guy. Or the um, amazing voice or just to or have this life. Yeah. She imagined this life the girl, better this, this better life. It is very much almost like a stalker kind of story a little bit yeah like she's just but like I, I don't think yeah. it's like intentionally mean stalkering though. no well, no it's, it's not it's mean a person stalker. With no one's it's no, someone no, so, who is no mentally skills. has been a mentally yeah. abused no social skills has found one person that they can talk to and they have latched onto them and mm-hmm. be like i want that life because i have no life right yeah but that's the thing that happens in real life so i'm not gonna like, i'm not gonna say it's not it, it, look this could could be a really good story and that's, that's why I'm, it's disappointing that's what I'm saying. Like, I already like it because there's a lot of stuff in there that I already like. Like, obviously, the art and, like, uh, the, a lot of this, a lot of the writing stuff that this is going to take. But it's frustrating because if they just did a couple of writing tweaks, I feel like this could be, like, one of my favorites. You know? If they just made, you know, if, like, like they focused on, like, Sue's past because they never explained her past. And maybe if they did do those final two volumes, they would have gone even further back and explained her past more. I mean, we're going with the assumption that because it was a military scientific experiment that it was abusive. Was it? Is it just abusive being in a cage? Or was I think, it, I mean, if you're being withheld from society, but what that's I'm saying is like, where does, abusive. What, what abuse is well, it? Was it physically liter- abusive literally, or just mentally abusive? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I feel like you're spouting some nonsense here. Yeah, kind of. She's she's basically been locked in solitary confinement. I get that. Her whole life. No, what I'm saying yeah. is, is we're saying it's a scientific experiment. When when you think scientific experiment, you think physical abuse. Is there actually physical abuse? I don't know or if there's physical just, abuse. That's what I'm saying. We I'll don't be, know. I'll be kind and say it's the most non-harsh scientific. Okay. Experiment. But the point that she's been locked away with virtually no human contact for years. What I'm saying is, is torture. Is, what yes. I'm saying is, is they didn't like make me feel that. Uh, you're just um actually that wasn't torture. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, that's a you problem. That's a you problem. Maybe it is because I'm so introverted I don't mind being alone. So mm-hmm. I that's mean, a you problem. What I'm saying is because I don't mind being alone, I don't mm-hmm. mind being introverted. When you're saying, oh you can't go out and talk and be with friends, I'm like Okay. Yeah, I know. Okay, we're, talking about, we're okay. talking about normal people. Maybe. But I'm maybe like, okay, so maybe that's people. why I can't relate to her. Maybe like, and but I can relate to Ron, who has someone who's like, 
Be yeah, my that's friend. What I was be my friend. That's be what my I was about friend to say. all the time. I want to be your friend. That's what I was be about to say. It might be a writing problem because you, you know did 28 say you did... type is gonna <laughs> Let me speak. Then. Sorry. You, that might be a bad writing problem though because you did say when you read it with Ron, it did resonate more. It, yeah. The stuff with Ron is, uh, in my opinion, Talk objectively better. I and I know uh, opinions can't be objective, but. But I'm just saying, whatever. I didn't get the same emotional connection to Sue, who is the main character that I'm supposed to have an emotional connection to, and I feel like that's a failing of the story. We it just agreed bit. with you. Yeah. I, but I'm just saying, like, that's why I give it a two. That's All why right. I can't give it a higher number. You you failed on, the, like, the most basic level for me. I guess. Okay. Again, I just feel like if it has some minor writing tweaks, well, not minor, I guess they're all pretty major, but if it has some writing tweaks, too, I feel like I would, this would be one of my favorites, but as it stands now, it is not. Well, maybe if there's ever, like, you know those people who, like, go to the trouble like, fans rewrite stories. If someone does that with a story, I'll probably love that. Well, okay. But so, then it's no longer a clamp. But what, I know, but I so still like that. you said that they kind of had the idea of having two more volumes, right? Mm -hmm. So that means there is no, like, I'm going to map out this story before I write it. And I feel like maybe if they had mapped out the whole story before they wrote it, well, it would handle a whole I don't, bunch I suppose, of but they I don't write, think people who write for weekly anthologies in Japan they yeah, probably I was about have to say. Of, I'll agree they probably don't what I'm saying is, is it could stand to have that oh, okay of but I don't think you can criticize it too much on that basis because manga like this are just not written that way yeah they gotta have a new thing every week I, Okay, we're talking about tweaks for the book I'm saying mm -hmm. if it could have been written sure, that way if it could have okay. been good it would have been good Hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically. If it could have been good, it could have been good. Yeah, and I'm exactly. saying it could have been. Again, with minor writing tweaks, it would be way better. I think I'm really going to shock some people here. Yes. I think I like this enough. Yes. That I've been seeing this other Clamp uh, series on Instagram a lot. Yeah. And I think I want to check it out. What is it? Tokyo Babylon. Which one's that again? I don't know. It's got some chick that kind of looks like M. Bison from Street Fighter <laughs> on the cover. And I, I think you're just into out. like I getting you, into nineties. I think you yourself. just like Street Fighter. I do like dude. You don't understand how big <laughs> Street Fighter Two was. How long the arcade lines were. You win or was it winner stays, loser pays? Like, <laughs> come on, you you weren't there. You weren't there. Uh, I wasn't for there the either. First time seeing uh, Ryu when people called him R U. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Go go Hadouken. Like, that was I so kind of cringed at you pronouncing it that way. Don't ever do that again. What are you? Ryu. I know no, Ryu. What I remember it. is Ryu. People yeah. saying Ryu. Don't pronounce it that yeah, way. It's Ryu. Ryu. Yeah. And I also remember people saying, no, no, it's Ryu. Really? Yeah. No. I grew up in Arkansas. No one was cultured enough to know the actual pronunciation <laughs> of it. So. I mean, when you live in the South like that, what do yeah. you do? So. Uh, okay. So we've talked about Clover. We did our spoilers. I've talked about, yep, I've talked about how I kind of want to try Tokyo Babylon. What we should discuss next are what the viewers can look forward to on the Weave channel coming yeah. up. <laughs> so people may not know this, but we take uh, viewer suggestions. I think we've done a one, one or two of them before. Uh, we're... Uh, trying to do a bonus video this month, which is Heartless Weeb. You should check out his channel. Uh, asked us, well, he specifically asked us to do a tour of your X-Men comics. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to turn that into an American comic tour. Wait, will you need the Max books back for that? No, not okay. necessarily. But uh, yeah, daughter is currently reading... The Max. Sorry, I got sidetracked because I thought about that. Talking about 90s uh, goodness right there. But, uh, yes, we're going to show our non-manga portion of our collection. But don't worry, that's just going to be a bonus. That'll either bonus be our video. next video or the video after our next video. It's going to be one of our off-week releases. Uh, we're not quite sure which one. But then after that, we're going to do something kind of unique and cool uh, there is a website called My Anime List. People call it uh, Mall for short. M A L. Mall. Mall. Yeah. Mall. My Anime, anime, anime List. list. Mall. Mall. That's a Why gross. Are you that's at a me? gross face. abbreviation. Her face. That's a gross. Anyway, there's a website called My Anime List, and people vote. And some people shouldn't be allowed to vote because <laughs> on My Anime List, 
Spy Family is already in the top five anime <laughs> of all time. And I'm just like, you came out two weeks ago. How can you be the best of all time? And it's because people rate it and it's like ranked on ratings. And some people shouldn't be allowed to rank. I know that's a spicy taste. Okay, you know how I keep uh, saying mom disliking Clover is a you problem? You disliking Spy Family is a you problem. I like Spy <laughs> Family. I just don't think it's the best anime of all time. That's a you problem. Off, that's a me problem. <laughs> yeah. You think something that just came out can rival some of the groundbreaking anime? No, I'm, I'm, I'm joshing okay. you. I'm okay. joshing you. I mean, it's possible. It has no, to start somewhere. it's not. It's, it's mid at best. I'm, jo- I'm joshing you. But, I think it's mid. Oh, you think, well, I mean, we've only seen the one episode. You think that one episode was amazing. Like, knock your socks off better than I any think it was person. above you said mid. mid. I said it's not mid. It's above mid, but it's not like oh, goat. It's there's, not goaded. There's a difference. It's definitely not goaded. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not mid. It's not goaded. Yeah. All right, isn't this supposed to be for like two weeks from now? Yes. <laughs> so anyway, then why are we discussing it now? Because. Y'all yeah. got me off on a tangent on my easily, anime list. Easily, apparently. Uh, but my anime list also has a manga ranking. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the top 20, 10 uh, manga. Uh, some number. We're going to look at that. I saw the list about a year ago, and I haven't looked at it since then. Um, so Daughter is going to be behind the camera, as always. And she's going to read out the the manga and we're going to give our opinions on whether it deserves its place in the my anime list or where it should really be because we are the arbiters of uh, our are. opinion is yeah. correct or is wrong exactly yep and that's why people tune if it in doesn't to get a those. weeby it doesn't deserve to be there that's right exactly so like i said comebacks you'll get to see our american uh, comic collection you're going to see our spicy my anime list takes and you're going to learn all about how Sonic 3 came on two cartridges.